Good morning, my name is Rachel Carrion, and I'm here today to talk to you about my experience with the New York juvenile justice system. Thank you for this chance to tell my story. Okay, um, when I was 15 years old, my mother passed away from breast cancer, and I began smoking marijuana to cope with the loss. Um, I was also very angry, and as a result of my anger, I got into a fight with the young woman, and I was arrested. I was arrested and then sent to an ATD program, which is an alternative to detention program. At the ATD program, I could not keep a, a negative toxicology report, so they remanded me. And they remanded me to an out of city, upstate program uh, center. Uh, when I arrived on the center, the campus, um, I walked into just violence, violence amongst the residents, the peers, violence amongst the staff members and the residents. You know, it was, it was, it was really bad. Um, I witnessed some um, girls beating up each other and being sent to ICU, staff members physically fighting, like not restraining, but fighting the youth to, I guess, try to keep them in control. Um, other incidents where I would, I would try to leave the, 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 the facility that I was in. I would try to go outside and staff members would grab me by my hair and slam me to the floor. I'm sure that wasn't the protocol. Um, another thing is after a few months of being on the campus, I got into a sexual relationship with a male staff member. And I was about 15 years old and he was 30. Um, because of the relationship that I had with him, you know, he would bring me in drugs, he would bring me in cigarettes, any kind of contraband I wanted. I had because I was sleeping with this man. He would also, after hours, I would go AWOL from my, the cottage I was in, and he would sneak me off the campus and take me to local motels and drop me off right back on the campus while he went home. Uh, the staff member was fired, but not because of our relationship. He was fired because the program did random drug screens on their employees, and his came back positive. Um, so my stay in, in, in this program was, was very bad. Um, when I returned home, because my addiction to marijuana was never treated, you know, my behavior and my drug use just, it just continued to worsen. And I began to, uh, to, to solicit my body to support my drug habit. I ran away from home, I left home, and I was prostituting on the streets for drugs. I wound up getting pregnant. And when I gave birth to my daughter, so when I finally got in contact with my family, that was about a six month period, for me being, running, being a runaway on the streets. Um, when my family got to me, they put me into a, a treatment facility uh, located in Long Island, it was called Teen Challenge. It was a faith-based program. And this is where the staff members actually tried to treat my addiction. Um, because of child visitation, because of the courts, I could not stay on Long Island because I, my daughter was in Manhattan, so I was moved to a Bronx treatment center called Odyssey House. While I was in Odyssey House, I got one-on-one -on -one treatment with the counselors. I stayed in group settings with other peers who went through the same and are going through the same that I was going through. Um, basically, basically, excuse me. Basically, these staff members really, really tried to help me instead of, you know, put me down. They gave me a lot of positive feedback. You know, they encouraged the girls, you can do this. You know what I'm saying? We can help you follow these 12 steps. You know, you can stay clean. You don't have to use. You know, I mean, there's other ways of coping with whatever trauma or whatever you've, you've gone through. Um, so while I was in Odyssey House, um, I obtained my GED. I, I got training as a, a home health aide. I'm also a peer educator. I go out and I speak to young women about safe sex, you know, and how important it is because there's so many diseases out there. Um, I got full custody of my daughter. She's two years old and she's a blessing. I am now an active board member of Community Connections and an advocate for and I plan on being a substance abuse counselor. I'm also enrolled in college. Um, this committee is responsible for working on the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Pro Prevention Act. Unfortunately, the current JJDPA law does not have anything that protects youth in juvenile justice facilities from the conditions that I faced. I recommend that this committee include language in the JJDPA to make facilities safer for youth. I have attached recommendations on this issue from the National JJO to my testimony. In closing, I would like to thank you guys for listening to my story. I would like to encourage the committee to make sure that no other girls has to go through what I went through and to get the treatment and help that they need. Thank you again for having me here today.